fun to try this out. So what I'm doing here is uh, especially, well, today's my day off. Fireworks and all that good stuff, right? But uh, I like to usually start uh, my day off with some warm-ups. And if you guys have been following me on Instagram, I've been posting this. I don't know now. Maybe I think last weekend I started doing this. And, uh, yeah, I just figured, you know, what the hell. Let's uh, hit record and um, I'd just share it with you guys. It would be fun to get some more stuff on here. Um, and if you're not watching the stream uh, that this is happening at, that's cool too. I'm going to be posting it right on YouTube uh, pretty much today as well. So I plan on doing this a little bit more. Um... It's pretty simple, and I think you guys will get a lot out of it. Now, I, I just want to quickly go over, um, I'm going to be doing two today. So there's this one here, and I'll, and I'll go through the workflow for this. But before I do that, I just want to, um, I suppose, just give credit where credit's due for a lot of this uh, silhouette workflow here. Um, so where I, I do this all the time at work when I have to do concept art. Um, maybe all the time is not the right way of saying it. I'd say like 95, 90% of the time. And it's a different um, mindset, I think, than most comic book artists, especially comic book artists, uh, where we kind of get more into the, hmm, what's the proper way of saying it? Uh, the sketchy side of it. And there's no right or wrong way to be doing this at all. This is just an example, um, and I hope you guys try it and get something out of it. But most of us, when we start drawing or figuring out a character or panels and stuff like that, we sort of, um, you know, there's a reason why people default to doing thumbnails, you know, small versions, so that you're not spending all this time erasing because you put somebody in the wrong spot or, you know, compositionally it looks off or it's not right. You know, there's something about it that's not cool. And the benefit of doing silhouetting especially for concept art, is if you look at this here, this is a good example. Uh, you see this character here, right? It's just a generic, you know, uh, female. You know, obviously with some really big breasts. I don't know why. I think <laughs> I think when I was drawing, if you look, I'll show you as we do the next one. It's like, just the brush is pretty heavy, right? Um, I'm going to be toning that up. That's not, doesn't really matter. But anyway, if you look at this, um, there's probably like, I don't know, we could probably get maybe two to maybe even up to four different poses just within this breaking it down and that's the power of it um for design especially for concept but the other bonus part to it as well is that it helps with your structure and i know a lot of you guys we've always uh, been talking on the channel and stuff about drawing cylinder people and stuff like that and it's very important to do that now with concept art you might not necessarily go that far with it hey rick how's it going buddy um you might not go that far with it when we're doing uh, concept art because concept art tends to do a lot more painting than actual line art. Um, however, that's where I want to say with credit where credit's due. Uh, please follow a YouTube channel. I believe he's been around for a little while now, but I've just really started following him uh, probably for a month now. Uh, the, the channel's called Sketchcraft, and uh, he does a lot of this stuff. And what I thought was very interesting was just seeing how he broke the silhouettes down, I suppose, into uh, more line art. Um, and it just sort of clicked the light bulb in my head where, um, you know, I already want to get in here and just start <laughs> doing this stuff, you know, uh, especially for comic books, because I've talked about a book called Framed Ink, and uh, it's been going around for a very long time now for composition and stuff, and I highly recommend you guys all check it out. But if you think about it, I'll just do a little quick example here, just for like a, a really lame comic page here, uh, right? Like if you've got your, your thumbnail here, which is how I would think about doing all this stuff here, and let's just say it's just generic, you know, you've got panels like this, right? We know we want to go top left to top right. And it does take a different thought process, I find, because when we're normally doing comics, right, we're going to be sketching and like, okay, so we got a guy, you know, like maybe we got people here, you know, and they're, they're going here, where's the perspective? And all that stuff, that's great. But when you're doing thumbnails, the idea is to be quick, right? So like, maybe I want, like, what's the, what's the motion I'm kind of going for? And, and I can just block in, I mean, this is obviously really gross, um, you know, and just say this is roughly where we want to go. From here, I can break it down and start refining the silhouetted shape. And you can just quickly see from black and white if something works. And what's the number one thing when we're doing comic books, right? It's clarity of storytelling. You need to be crystal clear. Um, and this is coming from a guy that would always get critiques saying my, st my stuff's too busy or they don't know what the hell's going on, okay? So that's why I'm gravitating heavily towards this. And I'm devoting quite a bit of time to uh, getting the motor skills, I suppose you could say, of doing this pretty much daily uh, so that it becomes second nature, okay? So, without further ado, I just wanted to talk about that. Go catch, uh, check out Sketchcraft as well. Um, wonderful uh, YouTube channel, lots of great resources on there, as, um, as I've already stated. And again, 
This does take a little bit of uh, practice, for sure. But this is what we're going to get. So we're going to have a girl here. So let's try to figure out what we're going to do with a guy here. So in uh, Manga Studio, I have a, a silhouette brush. And I'm just going to show you what this brush is. And you can actually use, and this is the best part about, um, hey, how's it going? <laughs> of using silhouetting, you can use any kind of brush you want and you're going to get some really cool organic shapes. Um, but for the purposes of this, just a pressure sensitive brush that's pretty big. I mean, this is a 300 DPI file. Manga Studio handles this stuff with ease. So uh, in Photoshop, I find, at least on my machine, I have to work a little smaller. But uh, so I want it to be a thick brush because again, it's the idea is we don't want to get stuck on details, right? We want to keep moving forward. We want to keep this stuff free flowing. Um, actually, here, I'll do this too. I'll show you. Um, damn, I don't think I actually have anything here. Give me one second here. I'm just going to pull something off of my Facebook where I posted uh, last night or the day before, just so you guys can have an idea of where we're going to be going uh, with this stuff because, you know, I, I understand not everybody's going to see everything that gets posted all the time. So, um, oh, wait, actually, could we do. Uh, no, you know what? That's fine. I was going to show you guys a Jessup King thing. It doesn't really matter. That's fine. Let me just bring this down here. So this is basically the workflow we're going to go in. So there's big black shapes here. You can just throw them on no matter what you want. And you can kind of see the character in there. And then what I did is I just uh, grabbed my uh, a white pen instead of using black and just sort of quickly carved out where the shapes are. I don't want to spend too much time on this because... Uh, it's quick silhouetted stuff, right? And then I throw a perspective over top. That part's optional. I like to do that again. For me, this is all study. This is supposed to be showing volume of characters and things. I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to use my time here as something to rush through this. This is just for me to practice. And then from here, we can go on with like a red pencil or blue pencil, whatever, and just sort of like, the, right here, this structure is all I need, right? And you could, with this body type, you could change it in any character you want. You know, this could be a kingpin, it could be the blob, it could be the hulk anything like that and you can start building up a collection of these things to just sort of flip through and sort of like practice some other design um, choices on that stuff and that's why it's you know it's pretty powerful for this and I've noticed myself you guys know I like to be pretty expressive if I can with uh, my characters especially the muscly kind of characters and uh, you know it's sort of and I, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna default to that too I'm gonna just start worrying about making a big you know, big muscle character here. Um, but yeah, it's it's helped me really start nailing down like volume shapes. And, uh, you know, I always talk all the time about, again, cylinders and stuff. And they're boring. As <laughs> they can be boring as hell. I'm getting a kick out of this whole workflow, to be honest with you guys. So right now I'm just sort of scribbling, trying to find some shapes in here. Sometimes, you know, and, and the more practice you do with this, the better your silhouettes are going to get. Uh, you know, so like, let's say, like, I have no idea what's going on here. I'm kind of thinking like a sumo wrestler kind of squatting, but you can go in here with an eraser, obviously, right? Or a white pen if you want to just keep it going. Uh, and just start carving out, like, maybe some more unique shapes. Like, maybe we get, like, an arm over here, like a, a fist uh, coming down here. What I'm doing is, and I don't, in this stage, again, these are just warm-ups for my day, right? Like, I like to spend about an hour doing this sort of stuff. I don't want to uh, necessarily stop any of this stuff. What I'm trying to do, since this is all for study, is I want to figure out how can I get more efficient with these silhouettes, as well as how can I kind of like, I don't want to say fix them, but how can I train my brain to start looking at these shapes a little bit better to start fig finding out figure work in here, right? So as you can see, like quickly, now this is something I'm already ready to go. Now I'm ready to just, I, I can already see this in my head where this is kind of going. Hey, Will. Hey, Fia, if I, am I saying your name right, Fia? Is that, is that how you say it? Fia? Fia! All right, so I kind of see it's almost like a little bit of like a gorilla kind of guy. You know, big old early forearms. We got this arm. I can kind of see it receding in the background. I want to kind of cut these legs out now that I'm, I'm sort of seeing where this, where this is kind of going. Maybe we can just give them like little, little dinky legs. I don't want it to go too far here, so let's just cut this out, and we'll just bring it up. And what's really awesome about this, guys, is the more you do it, at least, and I know I keep, <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm making this sound like it's the, the best thing ever. Um, you can really start pushing, like, if you feel like you want to get more energy in your art, like, can you guys see already, like, how far I'm pushing some of this stuff? At least to me, it feels like I'm pushing things, maybe not necessarily more than I normally would, but, um definitely feels like I can, you know, it, it's sort of like how do you turn a sh uh, an object that's just black shapes into, um, 
something that's a little bit more dynamic, you know? I'm starting to noodle a little bit. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, I don't know if I heard it on the scratch, sketch, scratch craft, sketch craft uh, video that I was watching, um, or if it was just another concept art video where they're talking about silhouettes, but think of a silhouette like this too. This is the power of it, and especially for comics, to me anyway, because of the clarity it gives you, is if I was to just have a person drinking a bottle, Right, and they got the lips here in the bottle, maybe their hands up here, and you know, it's whatever. And I was to black this shape out. This is what it would kind of look like, right? Which is, you know, you know, it's it's okay. We're not working in black and white. I get that, but there's a reason why if you have a person and they're reaching, and the bottle's kind of coming this way, and you black this out, one is way more clear, right? Oh, maybe that's not totally clear. Um, <laughs> and these are kind of I gotta apologize for some of this stuff here, but this is, uh, you know. It's clarity, right? And that's sort of what you're trying to train your brain to do is how can you get these complex things and turn them into something that's good. So I don't want to spend too, too much time on this here. We're going to fix it up, obviously, when we start worrying about it. So let me just save it up. And we're going to do the female one first here. Um, which one is this? Silhouette 9. And I've been printing these out, uh, for those of you that are interested too, if you're interested in checking this out. Uh, if you have a printer, print it at about 10% opacity, and then you can just do the method we're about to do now on paper. And that's sort of relaxing, kind of grab a coffee, sit down at the table, whatever. I have a sketchbook sort of filled with these sorts of things, so if I go to a coffee shop, or maybe I'm working on a commission or something, and I can just flip through it and go, you know, that might be a cool pose to, uh, to sort of throw in there. Uh, Will's asking, ever try this? Uh, in reverse grade, do you mean like uh, draw it in white as opposed to black? Winston, yeah, kind of looks like, yeah. you know, I could actually, yeah, let's, um, I don't know, I don't want to make it Winston necessarily, but maybe we could just do this, let's kind of get some fun in here, maybe we, this guy's got like, I don't know, like cannons or something on his back. And this is getting a little bit more into the, uh, you know what, I'm going to pull those, because this little practice here, I, I'm trying not to necessarily do this with like, character design because then I'll noodle. I'm more worrying about uh, figure work uh, in this study here. So let me just, <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm just going to pull it back there. Uh, the right one looks like he's eating a tax. And you know what? It's funny that you guys say this because somebody sent me a picture of um, the, the one that I just posted earlier saying that they saw an elephant uh, <laughs> in, the, in the big lumbering guy there, which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, Faye is saying you can get some cool ideas doing this as well. I've designed some weird characters and things. Exactly, yeah. Th this really is a, a, a very unique way of working. Concept artists have been doing it since probably Photoshop, or actually with Copic markers way back in the day. You, you don't even have to be on a computer to do this. Just get like a light gray Copic marker, and instead of it looking like this, right, it was just it would look like roughly something like that. And then you can just start grabbing like a pen and going over top. Yep, you don't have to be on a computer to do this here. Yeah? Yeah, you can see, you guys, look at this. This is the best part. And hello, everybody. <laughs> you guys are all talking about really cool ideas that can be put in here. And that's why this works so well for concept design. Because it takes no time and it makes you, your imagination kind of explode. Which is, you know, that's, that's unheard of in a lot of respects and a lot of things that we do. But in comics, it might feel like, well, how the hell do you do this in comics? So I'm going to have some videos coming soon of uh, how I do this for comic pages and stuff. So you guys can look forward to that. So, enough jibber-jabber. All right, so we've got this lady here. Uh, what I've been doing lately uh, is I'll just go in here and grab, um, maybe, uh, yeah, we're going to go with the perspective ruler. And I'm just going to just kind of hammer in an idea of where I want this perspective to be. Um, I don't know how far up, y you know what? Yeah. And this is sort of what I've been doing just for, like, study, really, you know? is use this time. We're going to go really far underneath her here. Uh, just using this time to um, really just practice perspective, all kinds of stuff. All right, so maybe we'll go like that. Seems good. And we'll grab a pen. Is it working? Oh, can't see it, right? <laughs> and we'll just quickly hammer this stuff in. Now, why do this? You don't have to do this at all. Um, again, I'm trying to do it for study. So by doing this right away, I'm activating, <laughs> activating, it makes it sound like we're transforming here. I'm activating uh, different things for my brain to look at. 
Uh, and I can kind of see things like, okay, now how does the form wrap in that perspective, right? And that's sort of like, um, I suppose, the, the powerful part of trying to work or do this at all in your practice and stuff, right? So we'll have that. Um, let me actually, is this going to keep, yeah, see, let me save it as a Manga Studio file here so I don't have to keep looking at this. All right, so we're going to have that. Uh, I'm going to lower the opacity here on these guys. Grab a white piece of paper, put it on top, lower the opacity a bit just so we can kind of see the figure just a little bit. And I'll make a new layer. And then from here, uh, this is, I don't know, it's been working for me anyway. Let's kind of grab a red pencil. Might look a little orange. And we're going to sort of figure this out. I want to just make another window here so I can put that off screen so I can kind of see it. So let's do it. We're gonna stay zoomed out pretty much again. This isn't worrying about detail stuff. And and the breasts here, like they're not. That's just absolutely ridiculous. I'm gonna uh, adjust those when we draw it here. Um, it just looks so stupid. All right, so we're gonna have like a collarbone up here. And which way is she facing? Right, so she's gonna be facing this way. And now that I've kind of got like where this is going, I can. Start to plot in, and, and let me know if this red's not coming out for you guys, so you guys can kind of see it a little bit here, and I'll clear it up. Um, yeah, so really what we're doing is we're just looking at our perspectives, like how are things folding in space, right? So do I want to arch her, her hips down here? That's what you would think you would normally do, right? Um, but I'm going to try, we're going to go up here since we're still looking underneath of her here, right? And right away I can kind of see like, okay, cool, we're getting some, some pretty, some fun stuff kind of going on here. And really now all it is is just worrying about the, the perspective that I have in here. And you can always adjust this stuff. I don't always feel like you're locked into uh, what you're drawing here, right? junk in the trunk here <laughs> all right so this is where the brain starts to like lock up a bit and this is what I love about this whole process is that it's like okay so the brain's locking up because I haven't been exercising those muscles in like crazy foreshortening and stuff you know so I have the knee coming at us here and then the legs gonna go behind us so let's start finding these cylinders here Looks a little odd. We're gonna have a kneecap in here. This leg is underneath of us, which is closer to us, so you would see the muscle. And kind of gesturing where the foot is, we can fix this stuff up as well. All right. And what's really fun too about this, like I said, I'm getting I don't want to say a headache. But it's 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 uh, waking up all the sleep that's in my head and and all that stuff. But it's trying to fight the lines that I would normally think that I would put. Meaning, like the knee, you know, like a lot of us, we might just go in and like, okay, so here's the kneecap here because it's there. But instead, it's like, how about we try thinking about only putting lines following the perspective, right? Like if it's going up, if that's all we're seeing is just have the lines up there that would fall into that perspective. So. If this leg's coming back here, instead of putting a muscle like that, you know, for the thigh muscle, what if we keep the curves going in that perspective, right? And what this starts to do is it really start, in my in my opinion anyway, it really starts to um, push like what you're actually seeing, you know, like that foreshorten, that twist, and all that stuff like that. Here, let me, what, are you, what are you guys talking about? Let me just see here. Da, da, da. <laughs> anyway, you guys are talking about Europe and 
what do you, anyway, it doesn't even matter. Don't care. <laughs> Let's get back to the good stuff. All right, so I'm going to fix this here because I can kind of see the twist that I have wrong. So we'll go in there. And I'm going to sort of draw through the leg here on the other side. Now you can see this leg I actually have smaller, which um, isn't right. It's going to start getting much bigger. So we can fix that. fix all this stuff in a bit. Again, it's not necessarily about making uh, the most beautiful, correct stuff all the time. At least not in this workflow for me. Uh, this is just for figuring out placement and trying and experimenting, right? Like, so here with the knee, maybe we can just turn it like that. That looks kind of cool. And the foot looks weird because we didn't follow through with the cylinder shape that we already started with. So let's erase it and let's figure this out. So if we've got the straight line coming down the leg like this, it's going to kind of tell us where our uh, ankle is going to be into the foot. And we're running out of room here, so I'm going to try to really make it much bigger so that it hopefully feels like it's coming at us there. Cool. So you guys starting to see... Um, so this is a little bit of a fun experiment, just to sort of push your brain in ways that it normally wouldn't. <laughs> Alright, so let's save it up here. Alright, so let's get out of the good stuff. Let's start going to the good stuff as I'm up here. It's not what, <laughs> it's not what I meant. So we've got our, our uh, the chest here. We know this is the center line here. Um, so we can kind of figure out where the side planes are and this is going to give us you know where our arms are going to be so I kind of have our arms coming out but this side they're needing, they need to get a little bit bigger because they're coming towards us here and then maybe we can yeah it's going to come up above us we don't need to worry about fingers and stuff right now Just flip it just to kind of see what's going on. All right, cool. And for the head, right, since it's all for study, I mean, you can always take all these things, right, and um, break them down even more once you start worrying about actually getting in all the detail and stuff. Because really, like, if you guys think about it, this is the hard stuff, to me anyway, and that, that could be just because, you know, we've I've been drawing for a while and all that, but... This is like the most complicated part because if this doesn't work, all the anatomy and, and all the time you're going to spend trying to make it look good is going to fall to fall to shit because you know you haven't put in the time to make the structure work as best as you can, right? And all the window dressing, which is anatomy and the costume and stuff, doesn't even matter. Like this could be Storm, then you could reuse this as Jean Grey. You know, you could do whatever you want with this stuff. You could turn it into a guy, really, if you wanted to. If you wanted to reuse the silhouette. Right, maybe we'll just put a little bit of hair in here. But yeah, this would pretty much be as, as far as I would go with that. And then uh, the next stage I would do, and this one's totally optional. Uh, I haven't been doing this one as much. Uh, let me just get my, is this going to work? Yeah, I'm trying to find like more of like a thicker brush, fat rough pen. Yeah, that'll work. And from here, I'll lower the opacity again, and I'm just going to do one more quick pass over it. And this is sort of like, you know, what lines do I pick? And then you can kind of have it look like that, and then we'll move on to the next one. That's that's pretty much it. And I, again, do this for like, I don't know, whatever time you got in the morning or at night when you get home from work or cool your night off with something like this. Uh, and it's just quick practice. And if you're, especially if you're doing anything with figure work, this kind of stuff uh, really, really does help. All right, so this is the fun stuff, like I said. I, this is the part I enjoy because this is the last part <laughs> where you start worrying about your brain telling you where things are going to go. So I'm going to start with the leg here, and I want everything to 
I'm going to do my best here to have it all like, do you see the lines I'm having here where they're pushing into the background? Right, like even her abs, most of us, I don't want to say most, but I think a lot of us we would go like, you know, like, you got your abs, and you start to draw the abs like you normally would, and th that's fine, but let's have some fun here, right? Like all the form is going away from us, actually. Let me add it in here. I just want to have an idea of where her abs are going to go. Cool. So from here, I, I'm just going to put like this line. That might look a little weird. That's okay. Let's erase those lines back there. But theoretically, it also gives that illusion, right, that we're trying to go for, that all these forms are receding. away from us. That's the good stuff. We can start to I can hear like the hip bone. Uh grid lines confuse you. Okay, so uh I'll just take a quick sidestep here just to show you because uh, if you're saying that there's most likely other people that are experiencing the same thing so uh, what I'm doing actually let me put the silhouette back in here if you think about it this is what I'm trying to do uh, if trying to break down a complex shape like this is, is too much that's fine let's just think about it like boxes right and use your construction uh, construction that you have in there until this sort of method feels right like the size of these boxes and stuff they'll take some practice but follow the perspective you have Right, so here's the chest. We'll have the hips. And this might start to look a little bit too boxy, but hey, we're trying to understand this stuff, right? So this back one, maybe we'll use cylinders because they're a little bit more organic shapes instead of just boxes. Right, I'm just trying to go real gross here so you can kind of get an idea. So do you see, I don't know if this helps at all, I'm just trying to still use the same perspective, but this is really what I'm ultimately thinking, like you're going to get to a point where this stuff starts to become a little bit easier, um, and you're right, this does take a lot to learn, um, And but if you don't do this, not this is like the hard work, this is the perspective in general, right, if um, anybody does, if you guys don't take the time to actually learn this stuff, it's going to bite you in the ass sooner or later like if you find like there's one thing holding you back most likely it's perspective because perspective at least gives you an idea of what you can and can't break um, and without that you know you, you'll never you'll end up just drawing things on blank pieces of paper <laughs> on blank pieces of paper um, with no background for your characters and they're just sort of like floating and if you ever want to get past that you're going to have to learn uh, perspective and uh, it is one of the more daunting things, I would say. Um, but once you start understanding it, you'll start l noticing levels level up in your game, like, big time. At least it's been true for me. Or at least it feels like it's been true for me. Right, so we'll have here, and for the knee, again, I'm going to kind of come up like this. And it's all experimental stuff. It doesn't matter if it all looks beautiful, right? This is sketchbook stuff, man. Alright, so we can even have the leg going behind there. See, and like this is, I don't know, like I don't even feel like I need to kind of come in here with the hands because like this is all, I don't know, it looks fine. I don't, maybe we'll bend the finger or something to make it feel more artsy. So in this stage here, uh, what I would recommend doing, and what I'm, I'm talking about skipping, is this is where you would start to think about like, okay, well, how does your anatomy roll over these forms? Right. And really pushing stuff like, yeah, she might not be this ripped and stuff. Again, sketchbook stuff. Don't worry about it. See, and, and like these lines, you might go like this into your ribs and stuff, but let's have some fun with it. What if we just turn it like that? Instantly, it makes it feel like she's going in the distance, right? But, uh, yeah, figuring out how anatomy connects in these sort of things and what lines yield the best results for, like, 
things in perspective, you know. That's pretty much it. Like this is, I don't need to go further than this. This is a warm up. This is good. Guess that's where we need to. And just like that. Oh, whoops. Let's just flip it over here so we can kind of see. Yeah, that back arm's a little janked. I could even get away with not even having it or putting the arm back there. Whatever. All good. So, one down. Let's get to the next one. Uh, let me just confuse. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Since we're looking up at her, the lines or the vanishing point is coming from the top, and the others are coming from another point. There's also a basic grid that they use in. Uh... Oh, you're describing the. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so real quick here before we jump on to the next one, I'll just uh, you know, talk about perspective super quick because you guys seem like you. You, you might uh, you might benefit from it. So the easiest perspective you guys can do, and just grab like a pencil with this, and don't grab a ruler. Do not grab a, ru a ruler. Save that for when you need things to look great. When you got your sketchbook out, stop. Don't use. In my opinion, stop using rulers. Just get loose and, and, and tighten up as you go. You don't. Perspective isn't necessarily. You're not drawing buildings here, okay? You're drawing organic shapes. So the the easiest way you can do a um, let me get a gray here. Just grab a, like make a panel or something and then just do this. Go up and down, left and right, right? And then pick a spot, pick anywhere. Well, let's say right here. And then just draw a bunch of lines coming from that. Now right away, look at this, cool. You have one point perspective, great. Now all you need to do from here is start, just practice. Pick any of these lines and make a box, right? Okay, so let's pick this, let's pick this, sweet. Yeah, I want the box to be that long. Even better. Uh, maybe we're going to have a floating box. Okay, so we'll put it up here. We're going to draw the underneath of it. I'm following the perspective I've already drawn. Sweet. Maybe start shading a side. I don't know. I want all the sides on here to be black, just so that I can see it in my, you know, my mind's eye a little bit better. All right, let's go this way underneath. And what this is doing is you're starting to train yourself, like, okay, so when this perspective line is here, anything above it, I see the underneath of it, anything below it, I see the top of it. That's all, right? So the next step, do it again. Except this time, instead of going crazy, <laughs> maybe uh, imagine there's a point way over here. That's the line you're kind of coming across with. What am I drawing on? Yeah, let's, let's not do that, right? And you're coming across Maybe draw it on your paper, you know, put a point here. And then up and down. And then do the same thing. And what you'll start to notice is this is how you'll start training yourself. Okay, so this is two point perspective. Things start to curve this way, right? And the last one is three point perspective. And all that is when people are talking about three point, in case in case for those of you that have no idea what the hell points are or whatever, right? So Putting a point down is a vanishing point, which is where all the lines go to, right? So that's one point. If that's the only point that I'm going to start driving things from, that's what it is, right? Two point, put it over here again. Now it's two point perspective. Now three point, let's put it up here just for kicks, okay? And all we're going to do is we're going to draw lines from it. Yay. Isn't this fun? Actually, one really fun thing that I started noticing when I was doing this, all of a sudden, like, you start unlocking vision, I found. Like, you could look at this and go, you know what would be cool to put in here? Awesome. Right? So, let's do boxes again. Whatever. It'll take some practice trying to figure out what line you're supposed to pick, I suppose. Right, maybe we'll shade this side. Now, by playing around with stuff like this, you're going to start to notice, like, like this is the perspective I just did. And you're going to start to notice, like, okay, what perspective do I need to get the, the shot, the air quotes here, the shot that I need. And that's really it. I mean, this is, this is pretty, uh, it's all practice, guys. Um, just like, how long did this take to do, right? Do this a couple times every day, a few times a week, and you'll start to uh, sort of see things a little differently. Okay. Uh, yeah, Loomis is great. Loomis is great. Now, obviously, the next trick is, well, how do I turn these boxes into bodies? That's, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to turn the stream into like a whole uh, Q&A here. I apologize. 
I just wanted to share this little morning warm up with you guys. Um, but yeah, check all that stuff out. I got a whole bunch of stuff on uh, here on YouTube. You guys can check out about perspective and all that good stuff. So this guy, if you guys remember, the first thing we'll do is we're going to put a perspective grid down. That's more for me than anything, uh, but it definitely does help just to see, again, that vision I sort of talked about, right? Where you can kind of see this stuff um, materialize in front of you. All right, so we'll have this, and let's grab our perspective ruler. Now, maybe I should talk a little bit about what I'm thinking of when I see this. So I want to have, maybe everything's coming right from here. So it'd be like a one-point perspective. It's kind of tilted. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to work. Let's try it. What the hell? We'll try a one-point perspective. So everything's fading to there. And I think if I use object to selector and I click, is it this one or is it object? That's what I want. So I click this, um, is it, I think it's this blue arrow. Yeah, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm I'm rotating my horizon. You see this blue line in here? Let me zoom in so you, well, it doesn't change, but this blue line is the horizon. This is like, if you saw the sun setting and it disappears across the water, the land, like that's your horizon, okay? By tilting it, it's just like a quick little way of making it look more cool, like more stylized, right? Like it's a little bit more action there. Things are askew. Things aren't 100% straight on. Like this is kind of odd. You know, it's a little more action shot, a little more dynamic. I'm just going to move the point to where I, I think I want it a little bit more. Okay. So let me move this above everything and we'll grab our pen. Sweet. So grab a piece of paper. lower the opacity big time and I'm only doing that just so I can kind of see where our points are coming from I hope this works so I'm gonna do what I told you guys I'm just slapping lines down da 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 and obviously Manga Studio is really slick at this stuff it can kind of figure all this stuff out for you you just gotta move your arm around yeah so this is just a traditional one point perspective and you can also do these lines in a separate color so that, uh, you know, if looking at all these black lines blows your mind out, if you just pick a color for each of these perspective lines, uh, usually that helps uh, your mind's eye kind of see it. Okay, so have that. There's our perspective. Sweet. Let's lower the opacity because I don't need to be just staring at that. Looks good. And you guys got it. The next thing we're going to do here is, again, just grab red. And we're going to, oh, we should probably save it first. As Clip Studio Paint, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to duplicate what I'm seeing so I can kind of see it on my other monitor. Oops, I grabbed the wrong one. Sweet. Okay. Let's do it. So you guys are saying things like Cyborg Ape. Yeah, you could totally go in here and whatever your, again, your creativity is telling you this could be, do it. For me, uh, maybe I'll mess around with the head shape a little bit, but I'm just this for these morning things I'm more concerned with structure than what it actually is now what it is can obviously help for sure um, make it a little bigger because a little bit of creative dis, uh, direction is always a good thing so you can see this line this is uh, because it's underneath the horizon line so we would see under it right and what I'm doing here is I'm breaking his forearm up into kind of like a bracer. And I find this helps me so that I can chunk all the anatomy above it. So all his forearm you would see here. And, and I'm going to start breaking the shapes up just a little bit more because this is where you can get a little bit more creative. This is the center line of the arm. And I'll give him a big old hand here. So starting is pretty much as basic as we can get because we can always worry about all the stylistic even though I'm doing a little bit of style anatomy here I should say but all the detail and stuff that's gonna come later we don't have to worry about that now right so here's the center of the hand I'll put a little like circles for knuckles right and right away I'm hoping you guys can kinda see this like right away like this already feels good like I for myself anyway this feels like sort of how I don't know, drawings should be going? I don't know. Maybe it was just like a little thing for me that it was uh, 
the chunks are <laughs> just helps me so this center line of the arm I'm not really twisting too much so it can actually you know kind of go into like a little bit of a you know line of action people talk about I don't I haven't really drawn like that in a very long time but I find with this workflow uh, it helps um, so this can turn into like his collarbone as well or or maybe even his his back muscles you know we can stretch it up whatever we want there now let's figure out so this center line is going straight down here so I'm just holding my arm out right now you guys can't see it <laughs> but hold your arm out if you want and if you're to have your arm out straight with your fingers out if you're to pick like the middle of your hands like in between your middle knuckles or whatever and just follow it straight up your forearm and then it's gonna go over your elbow but your elbow shoots out so what I'm trying to in my mind here is figure out that straight line I just drew where does that connect and to me it's sort of like it splits right down in between the bicep and the tricep and that's where the shoulder is going to go right so what does that mean well that means on this side I'm going to put a little cylinder here because we can see under it because we're above the, the horizon this is where the bicep is going to be and the tricep goes on this side right? and I'm going to just keep it all as one big chunk and I'm just going to give myself a little hint here okay bicep remember all the lines are going this way with it because it's going away from us tricep cool maybe you'd see this is more of a style thing I don't even really think you'd actually see the elbow but we'll put it in there just for kicks and then now I know like okay so in here is where the shoulders gonna go and again just simple stuff don't overcomplicate anatomy if you don't have to not this early never ne never this early this is just way too early to be worried about that stuff I'm just gonna race underneath here just so I can see it a little clear so now we can see that form is actually just wrapping back there, which is great. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to carry this all to be his back. And this will give us pretty much the dimension here. We can kind of, he's leaning forward here, right? So this will be the center line of him. Here's where his pecs are going to go. Or possibly even his ribs. Yeah, we'll say all that. Ah, what the hell. Give him another line for his ribs. And I'm following it towards the perspective because it's one point. And I know he's leaning towards us here, so I'm gonna i I'm gonna tilt his hips down. See? It's cool already. <laughs> there we go. Flip it, make sure it looks nice. Cool. So his head, what the hell? We'll put it in there now. Maybe we'll just do it like a cylinder or whatever. And you can always adjust the stuff, obviously, right? So I'm going to put this leg here. So this leg I'm going to start tilting up like it's coming towards us. Because like when you walk, the opposite arm brings up the opposite leg, right? And we're going to... So you can see I'm really stylizing the curves here. So i got, I got to pull that back a bit. I don't, want to, I don't want to rush where I'm trying to go here. I want my brain to just be taxed here. I want I want to build up that in endurance for my brain to go, no, stop pushing forward. <laughs> you know, little, slap yourself on the wrist a little bit or on the hand. You know, no, you, you can't worry about that stuff now. You have to focus on on what matters here. What, why am I even doing this? I'm not just if I was just drawing this to be a really cool picture, then yeah, knock yourself out. That's not what this is. This is learning time. So let's figure this arm out here. So I've already, I can tell that I've already got like this, the forms are kind of going this way with it, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep the circle going that direction. And here's where his bicep's gonna be. And I have his arm kind of coming towards us here. So maybe we can, we'll see how this looks. Always being aware of where our perspective is. Maybe we can kind of have his fingers doing something. Right? So let's find again that straight line. You don't always have to find this stuff. I like it because it's sort of like, okay, well, how, do I, how can I divide things up? And for those of you that are new and that haven't been here since I've been streaming, um, this is a concept art technique, but this part here, this is really a, uh, I, I found, about, uh, found out more about 
doing this sort of thing from a wonderful channel called Sketchcraft here on YouTube. Go check them out. Lots of really cool content, right? So let me just get in here and move the head over just so, you know, and you can always play around with this stuff, right? Like that silhouette is more of like, okay, it's going to, going to, it's going to get us moving, right? Like, yeah, that might be cool just to have his head kind of lurched over this way. Um, so potato prints, I love that name, saying this feels complex. Uh, yeah, it, it definitely is complex unless your fundamentals are sound. If you're, if you're still learning, this might be a little bit too, too much. Um, but once you start learning, um, and this isn't in a disrespectful way, but as you start drawing more and more, inevitably you will come down to being able to understand this stuff. And if you're at a stage right now where you think you're, you're where you need to be and you can't do this, um, I would honestly question uh, your, not in a bad way, I'm not questioning people as an artist because not everybody's going to draw like this and I, I don't expect people to do that. But um, really what this is ta addressing is if you can't break down a, a, a basic structure, um, a basic, I guess, complex structure, uh, your fundamentals probably need a little bit of love, right? That's all. So here we go. So that's done. Um, I enjoy it. There's some stuff in there that maybe I, I would have changed a little bit, but that's cool. So let's actually oh, get another piece of paper here. Lower the opacity, and we're just gonna do our last pass here, and we're gonna call it a day, and then get to do some some legit work. Oh, just give me one quick second here, guys. I have a phone call. I apologize. Uh, one moment.
Okay. Sorry about that, guys. And if you're watching the recorded version. <laughs> Sorry about that. So uh, we're about to wrap this up here. Uh, so hopefully what you guys kind of see what I'm doing here is I'm just, uh, I didn't really do this with the, the female one that we just did. Um, but this is thinking of chunky muscles, I suppose. Uh, not Like this is where you can kind of get into the design portion of it. Uh, it's not so much the, how it'll look 100%, but I do find even just throwing down some, some super quick anatomy, uh, you can start to find out some things here, right? Uh, of spots, the little places where you put like little lines and all that, uh, that might actually translate into some cool, some cool design sort of stuff, right? So I'm just gonna, just for fun, I'm gonna put in some rocks here, just so I can kind of see that, uh, that perspective. And uh, in hindsight, uh, if I were to take this to a final, what I would do, just because I can see this, I'm going to just quickly do it here. Uh, it, it just sort of feels like he's kind of here, but I would really start to just put some heavier lines here just so that it feels, and, and especially down here, so that it gives the illusion that there's some weight here, that that arm is really being pushed into this. And I might even curve this arm a little bit further back just to kind of get like a, a bend like that kind of going in there because that's where the weight would be lent right and I mean it might even be more appropriate going that far but anyway I just thought I would say hello with you guys stream this um, I'll do more of this uh, probably I'll even do this um, just trying to think tomorrow nah, tomorrow I won't be able to uh, possibly on Sunday we'll do another one of these and if not uh, we'll do it you know going forward for a little while here, and I hope you guys get a kick out of it, and you guys try it yourself. Uh, please send me uh, images on Facebook or Twitter, wherever you guys are following me, and I'd love to check them out. So, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, you guys have an awesome Friday, <laughs> whenever you're watching this. And, uh, again, talk to you guys all very soon. Keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.